All right. Um, oh, just wait a minute. So here we go. I'm here. Oh, well, first I have to say that I've been looking forward to this day for a while. It's really cool to have so many tech women gathered. Um, I'm hoping to get to talk to some of you later. Uh, so I'm here to talk about gamification of information security. Um, that's what I'm most experienced with, but really it's just hacking competitions. It's a very fancy title. I'm usually when I do this presentation, I'm presenta presenting TG Hack, which is Norway's largest hacking competition. So uh, this is me when I have pink hair. <laughs> I like colors. So my name is Marit. I'm the leader of TG Hack, which was the Nor Norway's largest hacking competition, right? I'm also the founder and team captain of UIO CTF, which is uh, UIO, University of Oslo's hacking team. And when I don't do all of these uh, uh, volunteer stuff, I'm working as a senior software engineer at a consultancy company called Soprasteria. At Soprasteria, I also work with this uh, CTF, uh, this hacking competition that we host through Soprasteria. And I also work with this project called Are You Sure or Are You Secure? It's in Norwegian, it means the same, Are You Sikin? It's very fun uh, wordplay. Uh, I also have this group called Pound of Girls, uh, which is a group for uh, technical security people, the girls, and non-binary people. And I'm in Norway's uh, best hacking team, Bootblog. It's a cool name. <laughs> so, uh, this is the team. Uh, I don't really have time to go through this slide. And this is what I have to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I can actually say one thing. If you see this picture, there's a lot of guys here. Uh, this year, we do have two more girls. Woo! <laughs> so this is the agenda for today. Um, I'm going to talk about gamification of information security, right? But then we need to talk about why do, we e why do we even need this? So I'm going to introduce with that and also talk about what gamification really is. Then I'm going to go uh, forward to talking about my experience. What kind of gamification do I know about? And in the end, I will conclude with some, or that's not the conclusion, but I will talk about the values that individuals gain or also companies or even the state gains from CTFs, which is this hacking competition, which I will talk about later. So why do we need this? Oh, my pushing, uh, uh, I will take this away. <laughs> um, so there's, a, there's been a report, I think it was in 2018, so last year, which says that Norway needs hella a lot of security experts right now. So it says we need 2,000, we lack 2,000 security experts and it's going to get even worse. This is a research paper saying the same thing. It's like, hey, leaving the windows open, uh, oh, what do you say, increased lack of IT security knowledge in Norway. And then, then this last one, it says that it's a threat against the digitalization de democracy and Norway's largest IT company, Every, they have trouble getting enough security people. And they also say that, well, the uh, industry thinks the challenges will be even greater the next years, and the problem has been taken to a national level. So it's pretty serious, right? And now we know why we need gamification of information security. And what really is it then? This is a definition that I got from Gartner, which says that gamification is the use of game mechanics and experience design to digitally engage, engage and motivate people to reach their goals. And if we make people then reach their goals by doing um, 
gamification of information security, then we might increase security knowledge in Norway, right? So let's move on to my experience. And my experience it is with CTFs. And CTFs, what really, what the hell are they? And every time I talk about CTFs, I say this definition I made myself. I think it's really nice. And it is that CTF is a hacking competition with a wide specter of security-related challenges where the goal is to find a flag. So let's just repeat that. It's a hacking competition, right? With security challenges, and you need to find a flag. But what the heck is a flag? Well, it looks like this. And the cool thing about these flags, it's just a piece of text, right? But they represent data you're not supposed to see. So if you find this flag in a challenge, you hacked the challenge. You either got the permission you're not supposed to have, or you found the data you're not supposed to see. Yeah, and that's the short version of what a CTF is. So you have these challenges and you want to find a flag. So let's go a little more into details. Oh, I forgot to put on my clock. Oh, all right, nice. And CTF is short for capture the flag. And now we know why it's called capture the flag, right? We saw the flag earlier. And what I really want to, um, yeah, I don't remember the word, to uh, say is that all the talks, tasks are within the ethical, our ethical hacking. We don't uh, encourage people to hack Snapchat or Facebook or do stupid stuff. We make these challenges for people to hack them, to get better at security and uh, hacking. It's a team-based competition, so it's very social. And as mentioned, all the challenges are within the security domain. There are two types. The first type I will mention is the attack and defense type. It's where you have the defender of a system and then the attackers of a system. Um, or, I mean, it's when your team is doing both of those roles. You want to defend your own system and you also want to hack others' system at the same time. Very fun. Uh, but I'm here to talk about Jeopardy style. That's my experience. That's what I do at the university, at TG Hack, and at Suprasteria. And in the Jeopardy style CTF, we have kind of this, uh, or it comes from this uh, American TV show game called Jeopardy. Uh, yeah, it's called Jeopardy. And it has lots of uh, categories. Here we see six categories with a bunch of tasks within each category. Each of these tasks has uh, a, an amount of points uh, describing how hard the task is. The same thing is with CTFs. You have a bunch of uh, ca categories and a bunch of tasks with different, um, different difficulties. These are the most common categories. We have cryptography, reverse engineering, binary exploitation, which is called PWN, digital forensics, and web security, or exploitation. And in the end, we usually have this one category called miscellaneous, which holds all of the tasks that doesn't really fit in any of those categories. But how do we play the game? And I usually say that there are four steps. You choose a task, and you try to solve it. If you don't manage to solve it, choose another task. Choose whatever, whatever task that is, is fun, something you want to learn. That's the most important part, right? When you solve the task, you submit the flag into this website, and you get points. And then you do it over and over again until, until you get too tired or until you win the game. And to win the game, you must have the highest amount of points when the competition has ended. And if two teams have the same amount of points, then the team that got their first wins. And now we know CTF. So 
Uh, this is all I want to talk, uh, say about CTFs. And, uh, oh wow, I must have been uh, talking like a train. Uh, <laughs> now I can relax. <laughs> it's actually a, a 25, 30 minutes talk, so I tried to uh, take away a little bit, but then yeah. Uh, let's move on. So we just, uh, let's summarize a bit. A CTF is a hacking competition, right? With a lot of security challenge, uh, challenges and um, you want to find the flags. But why is it so valuable? And let's start by talking about how it is valuable for individuals. Like if any of you would, oh, no. <laughs> oh, that was my boyfriend. He said he loves me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's very nice. Um, so, well, this is a typical uh, picture of when you compete in a CTF. And it says like, oh, this is my body. I think it's a computer or something in the middle. And then you have these guys beating it up and it's like a shit ton of caffeine, zero sleep. And I tend to say like, uh, don't take too much ibuprofen though. Um, but it's really how it is. You get so addicted that you don't sleep uh, you feel like shit, kind of, and you uh, you drink and eat way too much caffeine. Yeah, someone eat it as well. <laughs> so, one thing uh, that I usually say is that it's a really awesome way to learn programming, hacking, and security. And there's something in this uh, society of CTFs that they encourage you to write write-ups. So if you solve a task, they want you to write the write-up. And if you don't solve the task yourself, or you want to learn other ways to solve a task you solved, then you can read others' write-ups. So it's like they really like to share knowledge. This other thing is that there's a lot of teamwork and friendship. You usually gather teams with a lot of different knowledge like you have someone doing binary exploitation, someone doing uh, digital forensics. Um, yeah, you get these really cool teams with a lot of different knowledge, which I think is really amazing, actually. And also you get friendship from uh, other teams that you compete with, uh, teams around the world. It's very fun. Yeah, it's very fun <laughs> and addictive. Um, and this, there's this thing with this addictiveness, because you feel so accomplished. It can be that you just manage to use a tool differently. You manage to actually use a tool, or you manage to solve the whole task. You get this feeling of accomplishment, even though if you don't really solve a task. And after a while, because it's a really high, uh, a steep learning curve, then after, a while, you will get to solve the task and it feels so freaking good. Yeah, and this point as well is like you duel with a lot of teams. So you usually, when you uh, participate in more CTFs, you find yourself in a scoreboard next to some team you know about. And then you would try to, after a while, uh, make sure that you do not get below this team. So you start dueling with other teams to get higher on the list. And the CTF society also have this global team rating. I think it's actually some Norwegians who made this web page called CTF Time, where all the CTFs in the world are posted and all the rankings as well. So you want to participate in more CTFs uh, every year as well. So it, there's just like all of these small things making you want to do more CTFs, want you to solve more tasks, and it's really attractive for employers. I think Norway is a little behind on this. It's very common all over the world, and um, companies, uh, they host huge CTFs to get people to, uh, to get to know the good, like the most, uh, experienced and, uh, yeah, the most knowledgeable people. Um, yeah, for instance, uh, Suprastera uses it for recruitment of uh, uh, students as well. 
And this one thing I want to say is that I would argue that most CTFers usually has a higher knowledge uh, than the common developer or security person. Um, yeah, let's go back to this definition. Because in the definition it says like, okay, so we use these game mechanics, we use experience design to engage and motivate people to achieve their goals. But to make it more attractive for everyone, also companies or universities or what, whatever, I also would like to say that it's not, I don't think individuals uh, are the only ones who can reach their goals by doing CTFs. I believe that uh, everyone else can do it to reach their goals as well. As for instance, companies, universities, and states, I mean, who are going to protect our country if we don't have enough security people? Who are going to make sure that all our systems are safe if we don't have enough security people? So companies can use this to um, for security awareness, for security training or capacity building, but also for social activity and team building. Um, yeah, I won't go into details, but it's some, sometimes team effort in CTFs can be a little rough, so it's definitely some team building there. Um, and it can be used for recruitment as well. So uh, I wasn't going to have this one, um, but do I have time? I, I do have time, so I'll just say it anyway. way. So TJ Hack has some experience, which is really fun with CDFs, and it's this one time um, we had this kid running over to our uh, place in the Viking ship, and they're like, "Hey, we want to learn some hacking. What should we do?" And we told them that if you learn these Python things, then we can show you how to do some hacking. And they were like, okay, I will, I will learn this Python thing. I have to learn this Python thing. And they, all week they just came running for us to learn some Python stuff. It was really fun. Um, we also see beginners. Like from the very beginning, they come to us to say, hey, I don't know anything. This is really hard. I don't understand this. But then they compete with us. They go on workshops with us. They do stuff. And they get really, they just get so good at this. It's so amazing to look at. And also, some people put CTFs on their resume. Like, we have had people saying, uh, is it okay if I put you on my resume since you were this CTF uh, person? Um, and people get job by it. I know that NSM, uh, National Secret Mindiat, they use CTF for some, uh, for some of these uh, job uh, uh, thing is, I don't remember the word. So let's move on to the conclusion then. To begin with, we saw these articles, right? And we definitely, definitely need more security people. It's lacking like a lot, and we have to do something with it. So CTFs has gains both for individuals, but also for companies and even the state. And this, I didn't really mention this, but uh, I talked a little bit about TG Hack and what it is. And TG Hack is a very nice place to start with CTFs. We try to make it very low, low level and try to make it very including so that anyone can start with CTFs. And the social gains are really great. And that's it for me.